So before we get into the actual video, I decided I want to combine January and February's book hauls and make a winter book haul instead. So when I'm in my other attire, the first clip you shall see in a minute, that is obviously January's book haul. But when I come back and I'm looking like this, February's. I'm sure that was no need to get complex. I don't know why I had to go into depth like that. But I thought, yeah might as well stick them together so I am currently at the time of filming this waiting for one book from Vinted I believe um, and I think that's it so you know me I'll just splice that in anywhere <laughs> that I see fit um, but without further ado let's get into what I bought for January's book haul hello beauties how are you today I'm super excited because I have a very exciting book haul I feel like I've been sort of teasing a little bit on Instagram but Oh my god, I've got some great stuff in here. So I've kind of categorised them a little bit because I ended up going to a local high street and getting some stuff from some charity shops and I also went into the library and got some library books as well. But I've characterised them into Net Galley Arcs, which is only a few this time round. Then I also have Vinted and then I also have Black Wells. Then I have some library books and some charity books. So we've got a mixed bag, mixed amount of costs and things of that nature. So let's get started with the Net Galley books just because they're um, obviously e-books so I don't have them to hand and I feel like they're the ones that I might end up forgetting. So there's two here that I can't remember or not if I talked about in my last book haul. So I'm just gonna quickly skim over these guys. So the first one approved through NetGalley is Daughter of Red Winter by Ed MacDonald. And this one is published by Tor and it is released in June 28th of this year. Those who see the dead will soon join them. This is the author of the critically acclaimed Blackwing Trilogy, which I hadn't read, hadn't heard of, and it's the first of a brilliant fantasy series about how one choice can change a universe. So, Rain can see and speak to the dead, a gift that comes with a death sentence. All her life, she has hidden, lied and run to save her skin, and she's made some spectacularly bad choices along the way. But it is a rare act of kindness, rescuing an injured woman in the snow, that becomes the most dangerous decision Rain, or Rainy, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, has ever made. Because the woman is fleeing from Red Winter, the fortress monastery of the Draoin warrior magicians who answer to no king and who will stop at nothing to reclaim what she's stolen. A battle, a betrayal, and a horrific revelation force Rainy to enter the citadel and live among the Draoin. She soon finds that her secret abilities could be the key to save an entire nation, though she might have to die to make it happen. How epic does that sound? Oh my god. Next up, I have Siren Queen by... I don't know how to pronounce the surname. I do apologise. I should have looked it up before. Um, but I recognise the author's name. Um, so... It was magic in every world. It was a kind of magic. No maids, no funny talking, no fainting flowers. Louis Wei is beautiful, talented, and desperate to be a star. Coming of age in pre-code Hollywood, she knows how dangerous the movie business is and how limited the roles are for a Chinese-American girl from Hungarian Hill. But she doesn't care. She'd rather play a monster than a maid. But in Louis's world, the worst monsters in Hollywood are not the ones on the screen. The studios want to own everything from her face to her name to the woman she loves and they run on a system of bargains made in blood and ancient magic, powered by the endless sacrifice of unlikely starlets like her. For those who do survive to earn their fame, success comes with a steep price. Lily, 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 um, Lily is willing to do whatever it takes, even if that means becoming the monster herself. This one is also published by Tor and it releases in May this year. Next up I have Breathe and Count Back from 10 by Natalie Sylvester. This book is published by Clarion Books which was formerly HMH Children's Books and this is published in May of this year as well. Veronica, a Peruvian American teen with hip dysplasia, auditions to become a mermaid at Central Florida theme park in the summer before her senior year, all while figuring out her first real boyfriend and how to feel safe in her own body in this gorgeously written and authentic novel. 
Veronica has had many surgeries to manage her disability. The best form of rehabilitation is swimming, so she spends hours in the pool, but not just to lengthen her body. Her Florida town is home to Mermaid Cove, a kitschy underwater attraction where professional mermaids perform in giant tanks, and Veronica wants to audition. But her conservative Peruvian parents would never go for it, and they definitely would never let her be with Alex, her cute new neighbour. She decides it's time to seize control of her life, but her plans come crashing down when she learns her parents have been hiding the truth from her, the truth about her own body. I wonder if it's actually going to tie into mermaids for real, for real? We'll have to have a little gander, we'll have to see. And the last Met Galley arc that I have recently been approved for is All the Horses of Iceland by Sarah Tommy. This one is published by Tor, you can tell I like Tor, and, and it releases in March of this year. So it's described to be a hypnotic historical fantasy with gorgeous and unusual literary prose and it's also from the captivating author of The Fourth Island. I don't know if I've heard of that book or not. Everyone knows of the horses of Iceland, wild and small and free, but few have heard their story. All the horses of Ireland weaves their mystical origin into a saga for the modern age. It's filled with magic and darkened whispers of a people in the cusp of major cultural change. It tells the tale of a Norse trader, his travels through Central Asia, and the ghostly magic that followed him home to the land of fire, stone and ice. His search for riches will take him from Helmgard through Kazaria to the steeps of Mongolia, where he will barter for horses and return with much, much more. This novel is a delve into the secret imagined history of Iceland's unusual horses brought to life by an expert storyteller. That one sounds so super whimsical. I am very much intrigued by that. So let us now go on to what's here. Let's see. Let's go on to Blackwell's books. So um, the one thing that I find slightly irritating I guess just ever so slightly is that they don't all come together I think it's better for pricing and stuff so the shipping's not extortionate so I understand but sometimes I forget like if I've made a big purchase or a couple of purchases all together I have to try and keep track of what hasn't arrived and what has arrived and I think everything's arrived now that's just oh god that's just a me thing but it's really not an issue <laughs> okay so the first set of books I got was actually one I completely forgot and I made a separate order for this and that is the Smoke Thieves trilogy. So I am buddy reading this trilogy with Deborah from Hills of Books and we've already read the Smoke Thieves which is the first book. Actually I had this on NetGalley so I ended up reading the whole thing through NetGalley because fortunately my physical copy didn't arrive until after I had finished it but that's okay it keeps everything together. Um, the sequel, the direct sequel I believe is Demon World and then the final book in the trilogy is The Burning Kingdoms and I really like these covers I think they're kind of different from the first one quite vastly the first one looks kind of like an arc to me but they all like I think they work they're quite beautiful um so sally green is an author that i've been really excited and trying more from because i really enjoyed the half bad trilogy when i read that like years ago I, I can't even guesstimate how long ago it was now absolutely adored that trilogy i have a review if you're interested in my thoughts there so she's always been an author that's been on my radar and i just never got to this when it came out originally so it's been awesome to buddy read them um i will say well <laughs> You'll hear about my thoughts, so let's not get into my thoughts because I've spoken about it in my January wrap up. But anyway, we are basically following multiple perspectives that lead up to this main kind of underlying current of smoke thieves and demon smoke and kind of what it's for. So we're following, um, let me just read at the back, it'd probably be easier. In Brigant, Princess Catherine prepares to marry a man she's never met while her true love Ambrose faces the executioner's block. In Calidor, downtrodden servant March seeks revenge on the prince who betrayed his people. In Pretoria, Edgen stands at a crossroads, family and fortune one way, destruction the other. And in the barren northern territories, Tash is facing her demons, literally. As the kingdom's alliances shift and shatter, these five young people find their futures inextricably linked by a mysterious bottle of demon smoke and by the unpredictable tides of war. Who will rise? Who will fall? And who will unlock the secrets of the smoke? So, yes, very excited to continue on with this um, trilogy. I am enjoying having like a buddy read experience with this. I always um, like getting like 
good communication from Deborah. She's a great person to read with. And yeah, so I just bought the whole trilogy on there because I thought we're going to read it anyway, like each month until they're done. So it'd be a good time to get them all now, which is what I did. Okay, got a couple of hardbacks here now. Um, so I picked up Under the Whispering Door by TJ Clune. And do you know what? I didn't even really know what this was about. I just loved The House in the Cerulean Sea. I read that through NetGalley and I really would like a physical copy, but I don't tend to pick up physical copies if I've read the ebook already I don't know why um but these would look amazing together and I think this is completely something different it's not in that world or anything like that but I just I needed to I don't even know what it's about so let's find out together it's also a signed copy oh so excited oh beautiful what does it look like underneath beautiful sky blue oh Maybe it's cerulean, I don't know. Welcome to Karen's Crossing. The tea is hot, the scones are fresh, and the dead are just passing through. Love it already. <laughs> when a reaper comes to collect Wallace from his own sparsely attended funeral, Wallace is outraged. But he begins to suspect she's right, and he is in fact dead. Then when Hugo, owner of a most peculiar tea shop, promises to help him cross over, Wallace reluctantly accepts the truth. Yet even in death, he refuses to abandon his life, even though he spent all of it working. But as Wallace drinks tea with Hugo and talks to his customers, he wonders if he'd been missing something. The feeling grows as he shares joke with the resident ghost, manifests embarrassing footwear and notices the stars. So when he's given one week to pass through the door to the other side, Wallace sets about living a lifetime in just seven days. Oh, it sounds amazing. I think TJ Clune is known for just like his standalones. I don't think he's done a series yet. Um, but if this is anything like The House on the Cerulean Sea, I'm going to be blown away. I'm really, really looking forward to this. Perhaps a five star prediction. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. The next hard copy I have here is Kytonic, Cytonic, book three in the Skyward series by Brandon Sanderson. I have not read any of these books in the Brandon Sanderson bo uh, books world of this. I've read The Final Empire and that is the only one that I've read so far. But I know I am going to read all of them eventually. So I picked this up. Didn't even realise what it's about. Not going to read the synopsis because I don't want to be spoiled. Um, there's that. Beautiful copy. Let's look underneath. Oh wow. Stunning. Also signed. Oh, beautiful. And it's just like a, I don't even know if that's black, I think it's like a navy blue almost, um, under the dust jacket. Right here, so the next stash of books are all from um, Shona Maguire and any of her aliases, aliases. Um, so I bought a lot of her books. It was kind of a massive kick of Shona Maguire and I'm very excited. So the first one here, I didn't know if this was part of the Wayward Children series, but it looks like it's something completely on its own. It's got a really weird sticky cover. It keeps sticking to everything. Anyway, this is Dusk or Dawn. This is Dusk or Dark or Dawn or Day. Why can't I say that? Dusk or Dark or Dawn or Day. That is such a hard thing for me to get my mouth around. Um, so yeah, I actually really did think this was part of the Wayward Children series, but it doesn't look like it, like it is. So when her sister Patty died, Jenna blamed herself. When Jenna died, she blamed herself for that too. Unfortunately, Jenna died too soon, and now she must work to regain the years that were lost to her. But something has come for the ghost of New York, something beyond reason, beyond death, beyond hope, and only Jenna stands in its way. I think I'll enjoy this. I've really enjoyed, generally, um, Shona Maguire's writing style, even though I've only had a taste for it in the Wayward Children series so far. Um, but I think I like it. Looks like it's short to get through. I just, I'm very excited. Another kind of ghost story. So we shall see how much I enjoy that. Then I have Across the Green Grass Fields by Shona Maguire again. And um, this is the next one in the Wayward Children series. And I think it's like the fourth, fifth, sixth? What number are you? I don't know. And I can't see them to hand, so I'm not too sure what number it is. But you can read all of these like standalone. You don't have to read them as a series, but it's I think it's quite fun to kind of go through them um, and kind of, you know, read them in order, I guess. Lovely green cover. This one takes you into a horse world, I believe. So it says, Regan loves and is loved, though her school friend situation has become complicated of late. When she suddenly finds herself thrust through a doorway that asks her to be sure before swallowing her whole, Regan must learn to live in a world filled with centaurs, kelpies and other magical equines. equines. 
equines equines a world that expects its human visitors to step up and be heroes but after embracing her time with the herd regan discovers that not all forms of heroism are equal and not all quests are as they seem i'm very excited to read this i have been doing a um reading vlog of each time i pick up one of these books i think i've got two so far reading yeah i think this must be the sixth one because i read three in one vlog two in another vlog i believe so i might wait till i grab the other one of this and do them together or i might just do a standalone review or vlog or something I'm not too sure then i picked up middle game so i'm a bit nervous for this one because it is much longer than the wayward children books but i'm also hoping there's potential for me to really fall in love with it because i already enjoy her like more short form writing i guess you'd call it um this seems like one that i would enjoy so let's have a look how it is oh it's got like a little symbol of the tour not that you can see spaceship nice just plain black tour emblem so i believe this is about twins and it kind of has like a super hero super power kind of vibe so meet roger skilled with words languages come easily to him he instinctively understands how the world works through the power of story meet dodger his twin numbers are her world her obsession her everything all she understands she does so through the power of math roger and dodger aren't exactly human though they don't realize it they aren't exactly gods either not entirely not yet meet reed skilled in the alchemical arts like his progenitor progenitor before him reed created dodger and her brother he's not their father not quiet but he has a plan to raise the twins to the highest power to ascend with them and claim their authority as his own godhood is attainable prey isn't attained <laughs> it sounds awesome oh my god and then to go with that i picked up this which is over the woodward woodward wall by a deborah baker which is shana Maguire, and i believe this is the story that is featured in middle game so obviously i'll be picking this up after i read middle game and i think there's another one to this i'm not too sure if it's intended to be long but how does shona Maguire keep all these aliases like aligned and it just seems like such a complex universe and a complex world and mind and i love that so those are all my shona Maguire books this is a very heavily shona Maguire universe and it's also a universe <laughs> video and it's also very heavily Verily heavily Junji Ito comics that sort of stuff but anyway before I get onto that let me just bend my back awkwardly and I also got the next Paula Hawkins book so I loved The Girl on the Train I loved Into the Water I had to think about that and this is her next book and you know what it just has a special place in my heart because my mum really enjoyed her books as well and that was kind of like our little thing um, and I don't usually read thrillers often so I don't know to really enjoy this and appreciate that time with her was just good um, so it's got vibrant orange like sprayed edges it's signed oh love that how does it look underneath oh interesting end papers and ooh, so it says a slow fire burning on the edge up here it's got like a fire burning by the looks of it on the print on the front so i don't actually really know what this is about either i don't think so let's see what is wrong with you wow okay rude laura has spent most of her life being judged she's seen as hot-tempered troubled a loner some even call her dangerous miriam knows that just because laura is, is witnessed leaving the scene of a horrific murder with blood on her clothes that doesn't mean she's a killer bitter experience has taught her how easy it is to get caught in the wrong place at the wrong time carla is reeling from the brutal murder of her nephew she trusts no one good people are capable of terrible deeds but how far will she go to find peace innocent or guilty everyone is damaged some are damaged enough to kill look what you started oh, i'm so excited I hope I love it just as much as I loved Paula Hawkins' other two books. So those are all the books from Blackwells. Let's now go into everything from Vinted. So let's just start with the Junji Ito stuff. Again, love Vinted. I can find so many graphic, graphic novels and comics and stuff for much cheaper. And obviously these are the things that are really expensive because it's like all the ink, you know, it adds up to it. So I got some more Junji Ito stuff and i'm so excited oh my god everything so far except for the purchase that i made today all the jinjito books have been through vinted so excellent bargains 
we have i'm just going to whisk through these because they're all like collections of short stories and he's a horror manga artist if you didn't know a uh, creator that sort of thing so we have smashed by Junji ito this is how this one looks so 13 chilling nightmares presented by the master of horror then we have fragments of horror and it says an old wooden mansion that turns on its inhabitants a dissection class with the most unusual subject a funeral where the dead are definitely not laid to rest ranging from the terrifying to the comedic from the erotic to the loathsome these stories showcase Junji Ito's long-awaited return to the world of horror and then we have one of his adaptations of Frankenstein and so it says Junji Ito meets Mary Shelley and is his interpretation of that classic so very excited to dive more into Jinji Ito which I have absolutely been adoring I have as well a um, review of the first three books that I've read from him which is Uzumaki, Gaio and Tomi so if you want to check that out feel free to do so it is in the cards available for your viewing pleasure you're welcome <laughs> the next lots of books i think were from the same seller so i have things i don't know an awful lot about but have been on my radar honestly so we have the prison healer by lynette noon i want to say i might have a copy of this on net galley or i was not approved i don't know i know i saw this in net galley at one point um and it's been on my radar since but i don't really know an awful lot about it and it is a lovely hard cover, cover edition. Ooh. Grey underneath. Purple writing. Quite like that. I don't know if it's a series or a standalone or what. But it says, let me just read a little bit of it. Here at Zalin Zalindove, the only person you can trust is yourself. 17-year-old Kiva Meriden is a survivor. For 10 years, she has worked as a healer in the notorious death prison, Zalindove making herself indispensable, kept afloat by messages of hope from her family. Kiva has one goal and one goal only, stay alive. Then one day, the infamous rebel queen arrives at the prison on death's door and Kiva receives a new message. Don't let her die, we are coming. I'm gonna leave it at that because that in itself has me incredibly engrossed. I'm just gonna take a little pause. My camera is desperate for a charge, a little bit of a juice up. So I'll be back shortly. I do apologize if the lighting changes from now till when you next see me in a couple of seconds. All right, time to charge. <laughs> I've actually been away for quite some time and it's pitch black outside now, but let's continue on. So again, continuing from, I believe them from being the same seller on Vinted, I have Sorcery of Thrones by Margaret Robinson. And I think this is one of those, um, sort of american copies i don't really know but um it's got one of those like you know that extended tapered edge i don't know but it looks cool and this kind of gives me like throne of glass vibes just because of the aesthetics of the cover so i don't know if that's what i'm going to be getting from it but this is do, 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 the first in a series i think it says all sorcerers are evil elizabeth has known that as long as she has known anything that made no sense, did it? Elizabeth has known that as long as she has known everything, anything. Oh my God, ah! Raised as a foundling in one of Ostmere's great libraries, Elizabeth has grown up among magical grimoires that rattle beneath iron chains, capable of transforming into grotesque monsters. When an act of sabotage releases the library's most dangerous grimoire, Elizabeth is accursed, accused, sorry. <laughs> of treason with no one to turn to but her sworn enemy the sorcerer nathaniel thorn and his mysterious servant she finds herself entangled in a centuries old conspiracy not only could the great libraries go up in flames but the world along with them it sounds like it's got magical books and i'm here for that <laughs> and then i also picked up um these two books i don't know if it's just a duology but it's from the Prince of Thorns books by Mark Lawrence. I haven't read anything by Mark Lawrence before, but this one has been one that I've been interested in. Let me just see. This is the first book in the Broken Empire um, series, and I'm assuming then this is the second book of the Broken Empire. Yeah, book two. Um, so, this is what we have. We have Prince of Thorns and King of Thorns. So, Prince of Thorns says, from being a privileged royal child raised by a loving mother, Jorg Ankaraf has become the Prince of Thorns, a charming, immoral boy leading a grim band of outlaws. 
in a series of raids and atrocities. The world is in chaos, violence is rife, nightmares everywhere. Jorg has the ability to master the living and the dead. Oh, more ghost and necromancy, okay. But there is still one thing that puts a chill in him. Returning to his father's castle, Jorg must confront horrors from his childhood and carve himself a future with all hands turned against him. Oh my God. Oh, was this his debut? I'm intrigued. Okie dokie. Next up from Vinted, I still have it in its little sleeve, is The Iron Man by Ted Hughes, illustrated by Chris Mould. And it's so funny because me and my other half were talking about The Iron Giant, which I'm pretty sure this is what that is. And then I saw this, like, come up on Vinted and I was like, oh my god, I've got to get it. And I've only ever kind of remember watching it once or twice and it was heartbreaking and I haven't watched it in my adult life because I don't know if I'm mentally there yet to kind of take that in but it says the Iron Man came to the top of the cliff where did he come from nobody knows how was he made nobody knows but one little boy realizes that the Iron Man is not here to destroy the earth he could even save the planet from a new more deadly danger oh mm. so yeah I think this is the Iron Giant but this is the Iron Man. Righty ho. Then I picked up some comics from the Avatar The Last Airbender series. And I think it is a trilogy. I don't know if there's more. I want to say it's over three books or six books in total. But I have part one, The Promise. Part two, The Promise. Part three, The Promise. So I'm guessing there's more in the wider arc of this storytelling. Um like with other parts and other titles and stuff so yeah it's just continuing on with avatar which i love <laughs> okay and i believe possibly i got all these four by the same seller creaky chair sorry about that so finally picked up a copy of ninth house by lee bardugo i've heard a lot of stuff with the dark academia kind of um vibes of really becoming popular of late i actually want to go into this knowing very little because i kind of just want to feel it out and see how it unfolds naturally so i think i'm just going to leave that there but i know a lot of you guys probably already are well acquainted with this one i also have to kill a kingdom by alexandra christo princess must have her prince i've got quite a lot of ya stuff as well in here as you'll see so it says here i have a heart for every year i've been alive there are 17 hidden in the in the sand of my bedroom oh my god every so often i claw through the shingle just to check they're still there buried deep and bloody princess lyra is siren royalty and revered across the sea until she is cursed into humanity by the ruthless sea queen now lyra must deliver the heart of the infamous siren killer or remain a human forever it's like reverse little mermaid how cool prince elian is heir to the most powerful kingdom in the world and captain to a deadly crew of siren hunters when he rescued a drowning woman from the ocean she promises to help him destroy siren kind for good but he has no way of knowing whether we can trust her i think this is i, I wanted kind of like a taste into like dark siren fantasy especially because i really want to read into the drowning deep by mira grant i think which is another one of um shauna mcguire's aliases and i feel like this might be a nice um like why a step into that kind of vibe and i love mermaids i love sirens so anything to do with that and i'm all over it i got the sequel of children of blood and bone and this one seems much smaller this is children of virtue and vengeance um by tomi adeyemi i love children of blood and bone i've done a full um reading vlog of that if you want to watch that and this is the sequel so i won't go into depth here but yeah another stunning cover and then I have this one. It says, Your Silence Will Not Protect You by Audrey Lord. And honestly, it just really intrigued me. Like, that cover, it's just so, like, bold, but, but plain and simplistic at the same time. So, um, born in New York, Audrey Lord, um, 1934 to 92, described herself as black, lesbian mother, a warrior and poet. She had her first poem published while still at school, and her last year she died of cancer. Her extraordinary belief in the power of language, of speaking, to articulate selfhood, confront injustice and bring about change in the world remains as transformative today as it was then and no less urgent. This edition brings Lord's central poetry speeches and essays, including The Master's Tools Will Never Dismantle the Master's House, together in one volume for the first time, with a preface by Renieto Lodge and an introduction by Sarah Ahmed. Um, yeah, sounds right up my street. It's got some stuff like um, by Bell Hooks and Alice Walker that have 
like blurbed it and i loved renia de lodge's why no longer talk to white people about race so yeah this sounds like a lot of the kick that i'm on at the minute okay the last three books are from vinted i have a terry pratchett book this is the amazing maurice um and his educated rodents i is another one like brandon sanderson i want to eventually read all of the discworld books um by terry pratchett so every time i see a decent copy for relatively cheap i tend to pick them up here and there um i've tried to slow down a little bit because i don't want to end up getting duplicates but I think I've only got like a like three in total of Terry Pratchett books I just I need to get a kickstart and read them eventually so yeah and then I also picked up a copy of The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison, another author that I've really been wanting to try I feel like I could really enjoy her work um I ordered a copy and then I guess the seller just doesn't use Vinted anymore because it got like cancelled and refunded so I had to find another copy and this was the second to like best deal and condition so i've got this one so this is the way the world ends for the last time it starts with a great red rift across the heart of the world's sole continent spewing ash and blots out the sun it starts with death a murdered son and a missing daughter it starts with betrayal and long dormant wounds rising up to fester this is the stillness a land long familiar with catastrophe where the power of the earth is wielded as a weapon and where there is no mercy I'm so excited to try this. It's the first book in the Broken Earth trilogy, I think right. it is. Right, then I have the last book from Vinted, Serpentine by Philip Pullman. This is a tiny little book, part of the His Dark Materials world. You can, I don't know where exactly it falls between the um, trilogy of His Dark Materials and then... Um, What's the other book's called? The Book of Dust and stuff. So I won't read the synopsis of this just in case it spoils something on the timeline. But I think there's like three of these little ones to collect, which will add to my collection nicely. Right, moving swiftly on to the third category of this video, and that is library books, of which I got today. I picked up five seemingly random ones. A lot of them are children's or YAs. They're all um, like either graphic novels, illustrated books poetry something that i can get through quite quick um and here are those books so i literally just cover bought them cover borrowed them i don't really know a lot about all of them minus two so i have the wind in the wall by sally gardner and ravina kaya um, and this says be careful what you wish for the duke's garden was his pride and joy a statement of refinement and riches his gardeners must attend to his every whim even when that means coaxing a tropical pineapple to grow in the bleak Northumbrian climate the pineapple and the magic surrounding it can bring riches and reputation for the duke and his gardeners but at what cost then I have this one. This is A Fairy Tale Revolution of Blue Blood by Mallory Blackman. Nia has met the man she wants to marry. Marcus is kind, clever and handsome with a beard so dark it is nearly blue black. I kind of thought of blue beard when I saw this. So I'm kind of thinking this is a retelling of that. Um, ah, it does say that. Yes, she retails blue beard. Okay, excellent. Anyway, sorry. As I were. Nia demands a single promise from him, that, that Marcus will never enter her study in the basement, her private space. But when Marcus's curiosity begins to mount, Nia feels more and more uneasy. Will he betray her? Can he accept that no means no? Can a woman ever have a room for her own? Oh my god, that sounds so good! Oh hello Eliza, you show me your belly, you show me your belly! Then I have one from Alexandra Bracken, and that is Brightly Woven, the graphic novel. Um, and I hadn't heard of this, but I know of Alexandra Bracken. I've read The Life of... No, I've read The, the Tower of Prosper Reading. And I still have The Lies of Alistair something something. Prince Alistair. I have that to read as well. And a couple of others by her. Um, but this says, Extraordinary things just don't happen to 14-year-old Sadelle Mirabile. A talented weaver who dreams about life outside of her tiny village. But that all changes when a mysterious young wizard named Wayland North appears and asks for Sadelle's help. He's got a shocking secret that could stop a war between kingdoms if he can reach the capital with the news in time. He needs a navigator who can mend his magical cloaks and Sadelle is perfect for the job. As Adele and North race against the clock to deliver their message, they must contend with unusually wild weather and a dark wizard who will do anything to stop them. But the sudden earthquakes and freak snowstorms may not be a coincidence. 
And when Sadelle discovers more about North's past and her own strange abilities, she realises that the fate of the kingdom may rest in her fingertips. I like the sound of that and I loved the look of the artwork in there as well. This one, oh my god, I really want to read this because I have watched the adaptation, like the movie adaptation, and this is um, Raymond Briggs' Ethel and Ernest, a true story, and it's about Ernest Briggs who created The Snowman, Father Christmas, um, the Snowman and the Snow Dog, all those sort of films. This is about his parents and their life growing up, and it got sad. <laughs> like, I wasn't expecting it to get so, like, emotional, but this is... The film was amazing. I'm hoping that this uh, comic is great too. And then lastly from the library, I picked up The Black Flamingo by Dean Attar. And I have been wanting to read this for ages. This is an awkwardly short book though, don't you think? Like it's such a weird shape. Um, but yeah, I've been wanting to read this for ages. It is a story about Michael. Join him as he enters the world with tiny feathered eyelashes, travel from school to college where he discovers his flock and comes to terms with his identity as a mixed race gay team. At university, take a seat in the audience and watch him find his wings as a drag artist, the Black Flamingo. And I believe it's told in verse. Okay, so in terms of like charity shop book haul, this is what I got. Oh, and I also got some stuff from WH Smith as well. I picked up some like cards like in um, Oxfam and I thought oh these are really nice because I never have cards to hand and I always forget to go out and get them but I also thought let me get a couple that I can cut up and put in my reading journal so I've got some like an assortment of just blank cards um, that I can use for actually card giving or some scrap looking so to speak so that was lovely to see quite um pretty artwork on there as well and then I thought a similar thing with the um just strips of wrapping paper so I just got some florally ones um to spice up my journal as well I also got some random eyelashes and nails and stuff like that but I got three books from different charity shops so I picked up The White Tiger um by Aravind Adija and this is one of the uh, Mambuka Prize winners and I remember being intrigued by this when it first came out and then I kind of forgot about its existence. <laughs> Meet Balram Halwai, the white tiger, servant, philosopher, entrepreneur, murderer. Um, so I think it's a murderer mystery just from that alone but also I feel like I remember it saying that. Um, so yeah, see how that is. I also picked up a hard copy that I saw in excellent condition of Memorial by Brian Washington. I have this through NetGalley. I picked it up one day, read the first page and it wasn't too interested so I read something else instead and I rarely do that. Uh, but I've heard so much praise for this. It is about a um, couple. One is, I want to say African American and one has um, Japanese roots. Yeah, um, American Japanese or Japanese American and it's just about them i think they're slowly having a breakdown in their relationship and it's their day-to-day -day. there's a lot of turmoil happening i think one of the partners has um a, a father that's dying like slowly dying and it's just a lot of strain on their relationship so i think this is like yeah it's a funny and profound um book about becoming who you're supposed to be the outer limits of love and the family in all its strange forms so i think it might be quite a monumental read and then another book in this series that i still haven't read and i didn't know there were so many in this like universe but this is the accidental further adventures of the 100 year old man by jonas johnson um there's loads in these i just love these covers and yeah eventually i'll get to them and then lastly, I got two books in W.H. Smith. This one is, I don't know if it's a new one. I think it might be. A new Ginger Ito. I had to get it. This is Deserter. And it's another collection of short horror stories. Um, an ever-increasing malice, a mind-numbing terror. See the seeds of horror sown in this collection of Ginger Ito's earliest works. And I picked up this little graphic novel that I've been wanting to read for ages. And again, it's a very short book. I didn't expect it to be so small in real life. And this is um, The Girl from the Other Side. And it looks like that. And it says, once upon a time in a land far away, there were two kingdoms. The outside, where twisted beasts roamed that could curse with a touch. And the inside, where humans lived in a safety and peace. The girl and the beast should never have met. But when they do, a quiet fairy tale begins. 
This is the story of two people, one human, one inhuman, who linger in the hazy twilight that separates from night and day. Okay, so off to February. I am, as with January of course, very excited about the books that I got this time around. So I purchased a lot off of um, World of Books, which has a um, warehouse kind of local to me. So it literally came in a matter of a couple of days, which was super, super fast. So I bought four books to finish off some of my current reads of Sarah J Mass books so I got the third book in the Akatar series and this is A Court of Wings and Ruin. I have the little novella which is A Court of Starlight and something but I think this is the last full length novel and I think that's where it ends if I'm if I'm right in thinking. So I have this one and also back in February I finally continued on with the Throne of Glass series continuing with queen of shadows so i just picked up the rest of the series and oh my god they just get thicker and thicker um so i have this edition of empire of storm um this is really beautiful i do like the complete dark coloring around here rather than the white background tower of dawn always looks a bit strange to me it just doesn't match the others but i think this is about kyle cole's perspective so I guess maybe yeah, it's a bit different um so I've got this one I think these ones one was like very good one was good and Kingdom of Ash was brand new so they were all varying conditions varying prices but I'm quite happy with all the um editions that arrived and yes absolutely stunning covers so I am looking forward to continuing on I want to finish the Throne of Glass books first which is daunting because they're so thick um and then finish the basically i want to read them in publication order um so well if you look at the series as a whole um and then finish the akatar series and then finally start the crescent city books because the second book came out this month in february and i may have it to show you in a minute but i have yet started that series anyway I also went to Costco for my first time ever with my friend Eleanor and I saw two books. I didn't have a massive book selection. Um, it was mainly like, um, like groceries and tellies, like electronics and clothes. Um, but of course I had to see if there was a book selection I was definitely going to peruse it. And I picked up Big Panda and Tiny Dragon by James Norbury. It gave me um, the, what's it called? The Boy, the Horse and the fox something like that vibes um so yeah this one just says lost in the swirling mists they fall asleep under glittering stars it is spring by the time they emerge and while they sit watching a warm sunrise it dawns on them that another magnificent adventure awaits beloved friends big panda and tiny dragon journey through the seasons of the year though they often get lost it leads them to discover many beautiful things they explore the hardships and happiness that connect us all they learn how to live in the moment how to be at peace with uncertainty and how to find the strength to overcome life's obstacles together sounds so quaint and just joyful so i really hope i love that i also saw this collection of eight stories of amazing dreamers and it's a little people big dreams stories it's got um eight in it together like just combined like um little anthology little bind up thing some of these i've already read i think i've read the greta thunberg one um mary curie i think mahatma gandhi maybe just those three possibly martin luther king jr um but i thought it'd be nice to have them bound together because i don't actually own copies whether i read it through netgalley or i read it to gift to like my nephew or um friends children i don't actually own physical ones so I finally have a little bind up which i'm very excited outside of the ones i just said that i think i read i also they also have in this collection malala yusufazi um alan turin uh da, 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 charles darwin and emmeline pankhurst so yes in asda i saw they had a copy of luster by raven liani liani oh my god i'm sorry if i mispronounced that i have this on net galley but i just keep not picking it up so again hopefully a physical copy will help me um this one seemed very interesting from what i briefly know it's following this um young woman who 
finds herself in this strange relationship with uh, an older white man who's married and they together have an adopted um, black daughter and I think this girl, she's also black, the young girl that starts dating this old man, um, begin to have a little like a, a relationship, like a friendship with the daughter. I guess they, I don't know, they help each other and like connect with each other and then eventually she like moves into the house and it's like the man's strange and it's just, it sounds really bizarre. Um, but I'm intrigued to see if it's got any sort of social commentary or like I'm assuming I think it's got discussions on race in here and identity and I'm just intrigued to see what this sort of setup's about. Okay, so I did a little trippy trip to Waterstones one day after work and it's because I found out that day that they were releasing the second Crescent City book and I was like where is it please can I have it and this is the House of Sky and Breath and it's stunning it's really beautiful i'm not going to read the synopsis because as i say i have not read the first book but even the naked hardcover it's just beautiful it's a lovely deep blue and then the m pages oh stunning stunning i just feel like the character designs for all of sarah j Mars's characters are just award-winning beautiful specimens of not even human beings fantastical beings beautiful so i have that one and i also picked up three other books i got um princess at heart by connie glynn which is so weird because the fifth and final book got is getting released this month or next month or something and after i bought this i then um saw connie glynn on my feed and she was talking about the fifth book and i was like oh my god that's so weird and then i realized i don't have a copy of the third book so that's the book that i am waiting for through vinted and here she is in all of her beautiful glory let's have a quick little flick through pause if you would like to read the synopsis is continuing on i've got like the first book on net galley my second copy is hardcover this one's paperback the one that i have ordered that's the third book i think is hardback so they're all a bit mismatched in like editions but that's all right i really do enjoy this series it's basically following a princess undercover which is the title of the first book um I can't remember the girl's name, I want to say it's Ellie. Yeah, Ellie goes to this um, sort of prestigious private school and she meets a girl, no, so Lottie, sorry. Lottie goes to the private school and she meets a girl who turns out to be an undercover princess and they switch identities and it's just so much fun. So yeah, I feel like it's got a little bit of LGTB plus themes in it as well. Um, but yes, very fun series. I also picked up I Am Not Your Baby Mother, What It's Like To Be A Black British Mother by Candice Braithwaite. And I've been wanting to read this for a while. I am not a mother, but I find things like this really interesting because I never really thought about like racial identity in regards to motherhood and stuff. So I think it'd be interesting to see kind of like what she has to say and her experiences in that um, being black and being a mother and kind of maybe the differences and similarities and just her outlook on life um, which would be interesting to learn about. I also picked up My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I've been wanting to read this for a while and it's smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, I've heard it's a difficult one. It is about basically an abusive relationship like a paedophilic abusive relationship. I believe we are here in the account of a woman who is essentially groomed and abused by her teacher but she doesn't see it as that she thinks they were really in love and it's only when um, other accounts come to emerge I think she might be like approached by someone who's trying to get a case together or something that's when she starts maybe seeing it how it actually was which was you know abuse of power paedophilia um, that sort of stuff so yeah it's going to be packed full of anticipation uncomfortable tense moments i'm sure but i am looking forward to it and i like this random little flap here it's almost like i feel like i only see american books with that that's just me being naive i don't know but yes um i've accidentally dinted the back which is very very sad i also recently went up to covent garden and i went into an astrology shop with my little cousin lauren and we had such a good time out and about walking around visiting different shops and little like food places and stuff and in the astrology shop as well as getting um some crystals i got some books so i got three in there i got basically the book of virgo and it says the art of living well and finding happiness according to your star sign by callie kirkman um and this is kind of as it says on the tin 
I also picked up a middle grade fiction story called Hedge Witch by Sky McKenna. It doesn't really give you any information on the back about the synopsis or anything but there is some sort of like author's note at the front. Um, I think it might explain it a little bit more but I don't want to go too deep into it. Let's see what this says. 12 year old Cassie has been deprived of stories. Her school library contains only textbooks and fiction is forbidden. Yeah. Forbidden. Um, she must hide her clandestine reading and keep her secret stash of books under a floorboard in her dormitory. Yet it is these fairy stories that allow her to question the facts she is taught in class. I wonder if there is more to her world than she's being allowed to imagine. Okay, that sounds really fun. And then I also picked up Rebel Witch by Kellyanne Maddox and it says carve the craft that's yours alone and it says Rebel Witch does not seek to tell you what to do its aim is to spark inspiration and encourage you to create a truly authentic practice that reflects your unique experiences, tastes and personality. It's about trying things out, swerving the stuff that feels dusty and boring and choosing only what makes your heart dance the witchy fandango. I love the sound of that. Um, and then lastly today in WH Smith I picked up a couple of books so I got this one um, Sului, I think it's pronounced Sului. Sului has skin the colour of midnight. She is darker than everyone in her family. She is darker than anyone in her school. Sului just wants to be beautiful and bright like her mother and sister. Then a magical journey into the night sky opens her eyes and changes everything. I'm really looking forward to that one. I also picked up Rainbow Rowls Anywhere the Wind Blows. I've got the other books here. I've got Carry On, Wayward Sun, and I think I eventually I want to just read them all back to back. So that is the goal. I love these editions. They look super, super cool. Um, oh my god. <laughs> so beautiful. So beautiful. Um, and even the inside. <sighs> I'm sorry, what? What is this? Like, <sighs> artists be doing the most and I'm here for it, honestly. Love and it. I've got three more books now. So this was the first one that made me think to buy books in WH Smith. It looked really cool. It looked like it was sealed at first, but it's just, you're not even gonna see that. It's like really shiny end pages. And it's called The Hideaway by Pam Smyre. There's one rain lashed autumn night. Billy can't stand the fighting any longer. He packs a bag and slips ghost-like into the dark. His hiding place is a cold and gloomy graveyard and soon something mysterious and magical starts to happen. Oh, it sounds like a really airy, middle grade, atmospheric book, so I'm intrigued to see that. And it, it seems like, where it says he can't stand the fighting any longer, it makes me think of, like, a rocky relationship between his parents. So I'm wondering how they're going to approach that, um, what sort of themes it might include. So I'd be interested to see how that turns out. And then lastly, I picked up two of Rory Powers' books. I've got The Wilder Girls and burn our bodies down they look really stunning um i've been wanting to read the wilder girls for like the longest time um and it says they told us to wait and stay alive it says it's a visceral and addictive thriller about survival and the power of female friendships but i believe they're also on this like i don't know if it's an island or in the woods or something and they're all like affected by i don't know what i i don't know but they've all got some sort of strange mutations or powers by the looks of things i think that's this book i think that's what it was i remember riley marie talking about it on her channel and i think that was this book because there's another book that looks similar in cover and i do get them too mixed up sometimes so i hope i've not but we shall see um and then i also got this one as i already said and this one says um it's a twisty and creepy thriller that questions what we know of our own identities and how far those closest to us will go to protect the truth there can't have been another of me i would know wouldn't i oh are they literally burning our bodies and like cloning them and stuff Ooh. okay so here are some of the other books that i were waiting on this is i cannot pronounce the name awade on top i love this guy he's super funny and it's another one of his like autobiographies and then i got a surprise box from my friend son from the sun's bookish games which is now sunpire and here is what she sent to me super super kind she's been saying she's wanted to send me a box of her books for a while because she doesn't read and keep she reads and get rid of and she knows i love to build up my collection so she sent me a load of graphic novels that she had um recently done with didn't want any more for whatever reason and yeah what a lovely surprise this was i think this came at the very tail end of february so i wanted to just include this unboxing into this video it made sense to me so yeah thanks again son um really appreciate that it's very kind of you
so that is this massive book haul over and done with thank you so much if you made it all this way let me know if you have read any of these you've picked up any of these you're interested in you're not so interested in any reviews thoughts and feelings i would love to know but for now i should see you in another video soon bye Mwah.